Hi all, my name is Mass Banker from Kaiser Power Electronics. Today we're taking a look at a UV or ultraviolet light source, which comes from a yeah some of the lab equipment I have taken apart and also with its associated power supply. Now the UV source itself sits in this housing to shield everything around it and to have a channel of UV light coming out of this lens. And inside here we will find a deuterium lamp. So let's get this taken apart and test it. Let's first understand what ultraviolet light is. So in this chart we have increasing frequency to increasing wavelength chart. And we have the visible spectrum sitting here in just about to the left of the middle and out to the left after the blue colors and to smaller wavelength we have the ultraviolet spectrum. And that begins from some 380 nanometers. A deuterium lamp uses a tungsten filament uh, with a, a node placed inside a nickel box. And unlike an incandescent bulb, the filament is not the source of the light in a deuterium lamp, but it's a arc between the filament to the anode. And this causes the molecular deuterium gas inside to reach a higher energy state. And once this higher energy state then transitions back to its initial state, it will emit light. Let us first take a quick look at the power supply. Uh, I went over the power supply design in the teardown video. It's a uh, Nemec Lambda power supply, UNK 5A, six output channels, channel one, five volt, channel two, 12 volt, channel three, minus 12 volt, channel four, 24 volt, channel 10, 10 volt DC, and channel six, uh, has a 70 volt DC output, but has a 310 volt max start pulse. And that is used to ignite the deuterium lamp. Unfortunately, the high voltage output of this power supply does not work anymore. So I had to put together my own over here. And let's take a look at the lamp itself. Now I did show the housing here in the start. And it contains nothing much more than just a small... Uh, lens here and then it's just a massive aluminum housing here probably for yeah not just shielding out light but also stability and also as a huge heat sink the lamp itself it's a Hitachi lamp 890 24 30. I don't think I was able to locate a data sheet on this but it is a uh, three wire deuterium lamp seems to follow a pretty standard um, scheme where you have the two filament wires where one is ground and then you have the red one anode for the high voltage start pulse or the lower actually running pulse. Inside the window here we can see the part where the arc is going, going to be and we could just try to turn on the heater first. Now I'm feeding the filament here with 10 volt DC and we can actually see the heater glowing inside the bulb here. Before trying to test out any this UV light source uh, we will need something to compare it, compare it against and I don't really have any other UV sources than the sun outside and I don't really have much measurement equipment so I'm going to use just a regular light sensitive resistor here and if we take a look here we can see that we're measuring 500 and 30 ohm right now and if I cover it we get a much higher reading. So let's go outside and get some measurements from the sun so we have at least one other UV source to compare this to. In order to get some good reference data on the LDR or the photoresistance response to the UV source let's first test it out in direct sunlight. Now this is early spring in March and I have here a random photoresistor from a old box of photoresistors I have. And I have some different uh, glasses and shades here. First, uh, some regular work sh uh, shades, uh, two different, then some gas cutting and um, grinding goggles. And then I have three shades of welding glasses over here, shade eight, 10, and 12. So let's just uh, try one of each and see how it deviates from the 14.6 to seven ohm that we have quite consistent sitting here in the sunlight. 15.1 ohm, 26.5 ohm, some 100, 100 ohm, 
but it's about the same, 100 ohm. And we had 123, 118, so that's actually less, and a shade 12, 115. So as these shaded uh, welding glasses are made to um, filter out UV light, and the sensor is not, it seems uh, pretty obvious that the visible light uh, wavelengths above 300 to maybe some 800 that the LDR detects is not filtered that hard by the welding shades. For the test setup, I have just uh, used a regular full bridge rectifier, a electrolytic capacitor for the DC bus for some filtering, just a thousand microfarads at 450 volts because I will only go up to 310. So right now it's charged to 305 volts from a variac. So as this only needs a start pulse after some 20 seconds of uh, the uh, filament or heater being turned on, then I figure I could just charge up this and then turn the variac down to uh, 70 volts. So uh, let's get a line set up here for the um, measurement with the yeah, resistor here on the other multimeter and then test out the same glasses that I just did out in the sun. Be very careful when working with UV light, you can damage your eyes, so I'm wearing uh, UV goggles. And also take care of your skin. Now this is only going to be a short demonstration, but um, you can get skin burn as well. Okay, so now for the actual test setup, we have the sensor sitting here. We have the deuterium lamp in, in its enclosure. I have a switch to close in the 310 volt DC charged up on the capacitor. We will do that right in a moment. And we will read out the resistance of the sensor over here. And we will of course test the same glasses and such that we did outside. So at first uh, let me charge the capacitor to 310 volt. And now once it's charged up there I will turn down again to 70 volt DC on the variac. Now the capacitor remains charged at this point and by closing the switch we should get a arc and the output. So it's inter interesting to see how fast the voltage is actually going to drop over here. So here goes. So let's switch it in. Okay, so apparently nothing is uh, seeming to arc. The uh, filament is on, I can see the glow. I tried to turn up the maximum to the yeah, the variac, so we have 360 volt DC to try to ignite the arc instead. So let's try that again. And it does unfortunately seem that the deuterium lamp is defective. So yeah, that is also a part of making videos with uh, recording everything in the first try. So unfortunately, we are not going to see any UV light generation from this. What a shame. Yeah, well, still need to char discharge the DC capacitor, so let's just waste the resist on that. Oh well, at least we got a uh, bit of excitement out of this. If you made it this far in the video, I am first of all sorry for not just deleting this video material. But it also brings up an important point that I do also often have projects that are completely fails and that you have never seen. But I think there's uh, some yeah, interesting things to know and uh, it's a, a more background information to another video that I still wanted to upload this. So unfortunately the tube seems to have been outgassed and a deuterium UV lamp like this doesn't, does not have a getter. So there's actually no way to tell if it has lost its uh, gas and such a shame that we did not get to play with a high quality UV source. But uh, judging from the condition of the equipment it came from, it should actually be no surprise that it could have been damaged there. So, thank you for watching, and until next time, see ya.